Welcome you back to the Patrick Netherton Show, 1130 The Tiger, 103.3 FM. Pleased to welcome in the head coach of the Northwestern State Demons, a, uh, a team that has definitely looked very solid so far this year. Uh, overtime loss on the road at Rice, had a lead late against Oklahoma in the second half, um, played Texas Tech uh, close, and uh, coming off of a, a big 70-point uh, win over John Melvin. He is Rick Cabrera. Coach, how the heck are you, my friend? Hey, what's up, Patrick? All is well, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, pleased that you took a little time for me. Let's uh, before we get into to what you've got going. Actually, let's start. Let's start here. We'll uh, we'll do we'll do a little button on the end of this as well. Um, got a cool little multi what they call an MTE or a multi team event going on uh, this weekend uh, in Natchitoches. Tell us a little bit about kind of how this came about and and what we should expect uh, and why folks should turn out to see the City of Lights Classic. Yeah, we, you know, like we were just sitting down as a staff last year trying to find ways to get some more home games. You know, uh, you're getting home games is, is, is always great for your team, but it's also uh, you're great for your community. And, uh, you know, we just uh, – one of my assistants just brought up uh, trying to do an MTE. And, uh, you, know, you know, I called her um, – we had Monroe scheduled for a return game anyway through a contract, a, a three-year contract. So we called and asked them, hey, would you want to get into an MTE with another team? You'll get you two games. And they were on board. And then I just made some phone calls to some coaches I know. And, and uh, Coach Pujo at, uh, at North Alabama was in. And we locked in a two-game uh, you know, MTE, and here we are. Yeah, and it's – you look, uh, I, I, you talk about tourist destinations, right? Like the ability to – um, you know, put a an MT. Some some MTs you go to, and there's nothing going on in the town. There's nothing happening. But in terms of of the ability to make it an actual, not only a basketball game, but also a really good time for you, your family, your significant other, whatever. Natchitoches is the perfect place. The lights are going to be on. Uh, I believe the lights are already on. And uh, you know, there's downtown happening. I mean, coach, you couldn't ask for a better community to to hey say hey come down spend a weekend and catch a little basketball as well as really enjoy yourself otherwise too. Yeah, we, we definitely targeted this weekend in particular uh, just for this very reason. Um, you know, it's the city of lights. The lights are, uh, you know, are on or you just came on and there's a lot of festivities that's going to be going on downtown on Saturday. And, uh, you, know, you know, why not come watch some, you know, some basketball? If you're a basketball fan – a basketball junkie, you can come watch us. You can come watch some other teams play. Um, so why not do it? Uh, you know, watch three, four games in, in, in you know, in two days, uh, and have fun with it, along with going downtown and and uh, seeing the beautiful city that we live in. So it, you know, it works hand in hand. Hopefully, it turns out in our favor. Uh, you know, with wins along with fans coming in to uh, to support. Yeah, let's talk about the team because you know your your non conference schedule always tough. Like you're you're gonna you got a couple more of those games to to be played, but um, you know Northwestern State always plays a, a reasonably tough non conference schedule. But you have um, you know acquitted yourself very well in the non con so far. As we mentioned, you went to overtime against Rice. You uh, you had a lead in the second half uh, on the road against Oklahoma. You played Texas Tech well. Give me an idea of of remaking this team uh, because in the age of transfer portal, the guys leave, guys come. I mean, what's what was your off season like as you tried to to make this team the way that you wanted to see it made? Well, we we lost to Commerce in the first round of the of the conference tournament. Uh, the next day, as a staff, we 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 sat down. It was a target date for me. I wanted to go as far as we can uh, in the tournament, but it didn't work out that way. So the next day, we met as a staff, and and uh, you know, I just I just you know, uh, laid to my staff, and and you know, and they obviously agreed that we need to bring in some better character young men, you know, some guys that want to be here. Uh, you know, and we just vetted the process in recruiting. And it's not that we just necessarily had bad guys last year. We had guys that competed for us in conference. You know, we have, we finished sixth when we were probably uh, 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 a pick to be finished, I think, 10th or somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. But 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 it was important in conference that we were, um, 
you know, looking into bringing some better talent and some better young men and carried over to, you know, in the summer. In the summer, we bonded. We worked really hard. And you know, it allowed us to, you know, like I knew we were going to have a good team in the summer just because of how well our guys gelled together and how they worked together, how they hung out together. And then on top of the talent that they had. So it's not a surprise. I don't like moral victories, but the Texas Tech, Oklahoma, um, you know, those games, and I thought we should have definitely won the Oklahoma game. And, you know, and the Rice game is still hard for me to get out of my head because we had the lead with six seconds. But that's basketball. You learn from it. You get better from it. You move on and, uh, and uh, try, try to win the next one after that. You know, it's interesting, Coach, because, uh, by the way, Rick Cabrera joining us via the Pearl Shreveport hotline. Um, you know, Coach, it's interesting because uh, it, chemistry in today's day and age of basketball is not necessarily easy to get. You know, gone are the days when you would bring in, uh, you know, five, six, seven freshmen, and then you would bring in four, five, six, seven freshmen the next year, and those guys would all kind of bond together over the course of three, four, maybe sometimes five years. Uh, you know, those kind of days seem to be gone now in college basketball. How do you go about trying to build chemistry and and have guys like each other when you bring in so many new guys and there there may be so many new faces from year to year? Well, I, I mean, I'll be honest with you. Um, you know, some of it is luck, right? Well, Coach, what do you mean by luck? Is you know, coaches, we you know, vet the process as best we can, but you never really get to know a kid until you're around them on a day-to-day basis. Um, you know, most people that you call on the outside in the recruiting process, most people are going to say a lot of good things about the young man. Um, but until you really get into the, you know, into the grind, the everyday grind is when you really start, you start to find out the character. So that's where the luck comes in. You, you know, say, Hey, look, I'm, I'm going to vet the process and I hope he's a good young man. And we got, I mean, like we got lucky, you know, we got guys that we had relationships with from previous coaches. Um, you know, necessarily rush on recruiting, um, you know, and just take the best talent available. Um, you know, we, we, you know, we had to vet the process. You know, I told my staff, I said, yeah, we need to vet every young man like they're going to work in the Pentagon, um, you know, and make sure that they check every box. They don't have to be perfect, right, because this world and, and us coaches aren't perfect either. But let's just vet on it and just make sure we got guys that are everyday guys that when bad things happen, that they – persevere through adversity and so far still early so far they've shown that um you know on and off the court you know it's interesting as well rick because you 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 know you bring in a a sort of top line guy uh, in addison patterson who you know is kind of the name that rolls in there but at the same time your your team is incredibly deep this year right you, you know you're you're rolling 11 12 13 14 guys out there and all of them can play and i'm curious if if you're if there's a concern about having maybe too many guys you know back in the day mike mcconathy was rolling five in and five out at a time and they all knew that you were you know he was going to play 13 guys but he was going to roll them in five at a time because he was pressing and running and all that stuff um, but you know you're you have so much depth. It seems like early. Do you worry about trying to make sure to, about keeping everybody happy when it comes to minutes because you have so many guys? Patrick, the, like the old saying is, when you have a lot of guys, it's a good problem to have. And my situation, I don't know if that's true. Right to your point, because we have probably 11, 12, 13 guys that can play quality Division One minutes. And I, I can't play that many guys, right? I can, but it's, you know, like it's going to be hard to get into a flow, um, you know, so it's not – it's it hasn't been easy. Um, you know, I look down on the bench and there's some guys that haven't played that probably should have played. Now, I do always, you know, tell these guys, I, I, you know, I've said it from day one, I don't give anyone chances. You got to earn chances, and you earn those chances in practice. I don't. I don't give chances in games. So some guys have kind of stepped it up a notch, or kind of moved up the ladder a little bit. But those, you know, like the bottom three guys that don't play as much are still really good players. It's just how how everything has shaped out. 
Um, so it is a tough situation because we got good young men, and it hurts to see a good young man not playing the minutes that he thinks he should play. But I can't get emotionally attached to that. I just got to keep them level-headed so they can help their teammates. You know, uh, your philosophy, Rick, has, has always been to defend scared, right? Like to, to go out there like free-flow offense, so don't worry about that. But, um, you know, defend like your life depends on it. Uh, it feels like these guys have embraced that. You've got guys that seem to be willing defenders. Uh, you've got guys that are willing rebounders. You, your rebound margin, uh, typically in those those buy games, those guarantee games, the rebound margins can often be really, really out of whack. But that has not been the case. Um, you know, the 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 D one team, the Texas Tech, the Oklahomas uh, have not you know, significantly out rebounded you in any way. It feels like this team does embrace the the sort of the dirty work, if you will, of of what it takes to be competitive and potentially win some of these games. And that's a credit to them, right? You know, because um, I don't want to come off as a dictator, but it's a non-negotiable, uh, you know, in my program that you have to defend. But that's a credit to them, right? Because like uh, the great Kelvin Sampson said, you know, if you want to be a good defender, you got to want to be a good defender. And they want to be good defenders. And they want to, um, you know, do things to help make winning plays. I always tell them on a defensive end, if you make a mistake defensively, you have to make that mistake with elite effort because mistakes are going to be made. That's that, that that's a given. But how you make them is going to determine how things are going to go. And nothing is ever perfect for us. Um, you know, rebounding, we can play a great play great defense for 25 seconds, and if you don't get that rebound in between those last five seconds, that great possession doesn't matter anymore. Uh, so it's important to them, right? And but, but like I said, it's a great credit to those young men because they want to. you got to have a want to. Uh, offensively, you know, if you guard, if we're not taking the ball out of bounds every time, which means the other team is scoring, then play, play freely offensively. Now, play freely. Don't take the word free lightly. Play unselfish and don't turn the ball over. Yeah, and, and you know, we saw that against John Melvin. Your team, uh, you know, had 30, 36 assists. Um, you know, you, you definitely – it seems like these guys are, are looking for each other. And, and, look, that's another thing that can be a, a negative byproduct of a lot of guys coming in for the first time is you can have guys that are selfish. But it feels like, Rick, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, it feels like the, the other players recognize when the guy has the hot hand. And we've seen different guys for you have the hot hand. Micah Thomas has done it. Um, you know, we saw against Rice that, that um, you know, you got 20-plus points from different guys. It feels like your team understands that when someone is, is riding a hot streak to get them the ball. And, and that feels like kind of the ultimate compliment to pay to a group of players is, hey, don't force your own shot when this other guy is clearly in the zone. It feels like your team has embraced that. Yeah, that's a great trait that we have, and that comes from – you know, our guys liking each other as people, respecting each other's strength, and, you know, you're having a team-first mentality. Trust me, uh, you know, everybody wants to score. Uh, as a coach, I know who I want to score the most, um, but you guys understand it. Get him the ball. Let him do his thing. Um, you know, but, but also while doing that, be unselfish doing it. Um, so that's a good thing, and you know, like the tough part of a, of, a, of a coach is to maintaining that for four months and maintaining it for four months. So it's early now, um, and it's my job and my staff's job for us to continue to make that, uh, you, know, you know, our players have the buy-in to continue to do that because that equates to winning. Last thing, Coach, I know you got to get to practice. Um, tell me about ULM and North Alabama, and, and again, kind of button, to put a button on it, tell people why they should come out and, and enjoy some – good Division One college basketball this weekend. Yeah, well, you know, Lemons are a very good team right up the road, you know, in-state, uh, you know, team. And, and, you know, like I know, it's always great to have uh, uh, two in-state teams that aren't too far apart go up against each other. They're very big at, at the guard and the, and the uh, forward center spot. They're physical, very well coached. Richard has done a phenomenal job in his many years. He's known of, you know, as an offensive coach. I can really, really uh, chop defenses up. So we're so we're ready for that. And and North Alabama coach Pujo has a really, really good team this year. Uh, you know, like they have a great balance of shooting, um, 
you know, and uh, you're playing inside out, you know, with some rim protection as well as some athleticism. Uh, you know, so it's fun. Like, you're going to see good basketball, right? And hopefully you see much better basketball than the other teams from your Northwestern State Demons, right? Yeah. Um, but just come, you know, come out. We have good weather, right? Good weather, good town. This town is ready to explode for winning basketball. You know, you know I know they had it with, you know, Corey's one year and Coach McConaughey's year. But just come support us. And in order for us to continue to win, we need your support. We need that home court advantage. Uh, so just take two, uh, two hours out of your day. Come support us. Uh, if you live in Shreveport, come drive an hour. Um, you know, but come see a great team that's ready to to uh, transition to another level. Yeah, and then get out and enjoy the Christmas lights and, and uh, Christmas festival getting ready to go down in downtown Natchitoches. Just make a whole day out of it. Um, Coach, you got road trips to Texas coming Absolutely. up, so you and I need to uh, – we need to kibitz a little bit, and I need to give you some recommendations on where to eat when you hit the road, brother. So we'll make sure to do that soon. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I yeah. heard a lot about Austin. I've never been there in all my years. Austin? Oh, brother. It's, uh, yeah. I, I just want you to know, there, I, you might have a stowaway on, on the Austin road trip to, t- to face Texas. I might end up just jumping on the bus. Just, <laughs> you, just be ready is all I'm saying. Coach, anytime, anytime, anytime. Pre- appreciate you. Good luck coming up this weekend. Uh, go get them, and uh, we'll talk to you again here before too long. Good. I appreciate you, man. All right. Rick Cabrera, head coach of the Northwestern State Demons.